Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my booktube channel about books and reading and stuff. This video is going to be the end tag. We had a break of one week because I was away in Passanari. Many things begin with N, but I won't be using the bitter and offensive N word. N is for New York. New York, New York. So great they named it twice. This was a present from one of my best students, Tamona, who went to New York shortly before the pandemic. Uh, what was the last book you read that was set in New York? I've read many books recently that were set in America, but they tended to be places like Florida or Minnesota or the Angola State Penitentiary in Louisiana. Looking back a long way, I read The Bonfire of the Vanities. This was the story of Sherman McCoy, a bond trader in the 80s, whose car was stopped by these two black men and his date drove away, hitting on the black man. And it's about what happened after that. It's a very interesting read. The Bonfire of the Vanities by Tom Wolfe. What was the last book you read set in New York? Could be the city, could be the state. And it's for 1984. George Orwell's prophetic novel. Do you think we're living more in the world of 1984 or the world of Brave New World by Aldous Huxley? Whilst the surveillance culture we have at present with all the CCTV cameras everywhere is reminiscent of 1984, I think our world now is more like Brave New World with we've got the drugs like the Soma they had in Brave New World we've got the entertainments, the social media distractions like the feelies in Brave New World and we've got this great consumerism that was in Brave New World I think our world now is more like the vision of Huxley than of Orwell. What's your opinion? N is for Nightmare. Has any book you've read given you nightmares? I read a lot of horror books by James Herbert, Stephen King. The includes these didn't give me nightmares. What did give me nightmare was the Ladybug book Jack and the Beanstalk. This was read to me when I was a small child and I had this recurring dream where I was on this pirate ship and that the ogre from Jack and the Beanstalk was coming to get me, saying that rhyme, fee fi fo fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman, be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. And I was throwing cannonballs off the side of the ship, and the, as the ogre was about to get me, I'd wake up with my heart beating. N is for nautical and navy. Necessito del mar porque me enseña. No sé si es ola sola o ser profundo. These were the opening lines of a poem to the sea by Pablo Neruda. More ends. What was the last book you read about seafaring? I've read many books about seafaring when I was a child. I visited HMS Victory in Portsmouth. I visited the Catisac in London. I had an essay published in the school magazine imagining what it would be like to be a powder monkey aboard the HMS Victory. Recently I finished We the Drowned by the Danish writer Carsten Jensen. This was an amazing book. It's about Marstel, which is a seaport in Denmark on the island of Aero. And it's a multi-generational book going from through a hundred years from 1848 to the end of the Second World War and it's about how most of the men in this town became sailors and many of them were lost at sea and many were drowned. It's a very interesting book. Uh, it often uses the first person plural like we talking about the scenes as though the person was one of the sailors or the person was in the classroom with, or it was many people in the classroom with the protagonists in the story. And it's 
an amazing story. It's a very weighty tome. If you got the paper version, it would be almost 700 pages. I read it on Kindle. N is for NetGalley. I have the NetGalley app on my phone. The idea of NetGalley and similar sites, I'm also on Book Sirens, is that uh, you can download books, ebooks from them for free, sometimes eARCs, these are advanced copies or some are read now. And in return for getting the free book, you leave a review once you've read it on a site or on a number of sites to help with the hype around the book. I joined NetGalley in March and I've read eight books from NetGalley. These are all by authors that were new to me. Uh, three of them were disappointing, two of them were fine, and three of them, these were five star reads. The five star reads were The Cartographer's Secret by T. Cooper, which is coming out in paperback in November. It's an Australian historical novel set in Hunter Valley. And there's Inhuman Trafficking by Mike Papantonio and Alan Russell. And the third was In Dark Water by Lynn McEwan, which is a police procedural novel set in Scotland. These three were all five star reads for me. Each of the ebooks I get from NetGalley and from Book Sirens I review on my blog. I also leave reviews on Goodreads and Amazon. And I'll sometimes talk about the books on this channel. The non-fiction. What percentage of your reading would you say would be non-fiction? I don't read a lot of non-fiction, maybe 10 to 15 percent. I like books about psychology. This is Oliver Sacks and Anthropology on Mars, which is various case studies of people with um, different syndromes, different psychological conditions or neurological syndromes. It's fascinating book. I like books about languages and places. This is Lingo by Gaston Doran about the different languages of Europe. Um, I also read recently Why We Sleep by Matthew Jenkins which was a very influential book on my life and since I've read it I've been trying to get to bed at 12 every night and trying to get up around 8 so I allow myself the 8 hours sleep I need to function normally and to live a healthy life. N is for 19th century. What was the last novel you read that was written in the 19th century? On my recent break I read two. I read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. This I'll talk about more in the X tag. And I read The Gambler by Fyodor Dostoevsky. This is about Alexei Ivanovich, who goes to a German resort called Roulettenburg and he becomes obsessed with gambling and with the roulette wheel and the general who employs him sacks him but the general's grandmother comes to the resort and she also becomes addicted to gambling. Dostoevsky knew about gambling himself once he gambled away his wife's wedding ring so it's a fascinating look into the mind of the gambler and how when they're gambling they can't think about anything else about life or love outside the roulette wheel or the card table. It's an interesting book. And it's for Northanger Abbey, another 19th century novel I finished this month. Uh, Catherine Moreland, the heroine, uh, her life is very affected by what she reads. Does the literature that you read affect how you see life? I think the literature gives me some empathy for people who live very different lives to me. I'm currently reading Beloved by Toni Morrison, which is a lot about the pain of the slave experience. This is something I won't have experienced personally, obviously, living in the 21st century with my white privilege. But it gives me some inkling into 
how terrible that life was. Uh, Catherine Morland, she imagines when she goes to Northanger Abbey that her host's wife, who died, has died in some dark and uh, mysterious circumstances because she liked to read the gothic novels of Anne Radcliffe. N is for notes. Do you make notes when you're reading? This is my reading journal. Every day I make some notes about what I'm reading and sometimes do some drawings and sketches. Uh, the highlighted these ones are the books I got from NetGalley if it's in green. I highlight in orange if it's something I've downloaded from Kindle. And in red if it's from Book Sirens. So I keep notes of what I'm reading. I don't always have a book, a notebook beside me when I'm reading. If I'm reading on Kindle, it's very easy to make notes. I can highlight passages and I can make notes as I read. But if I'm reading a paper book, sometimes it's not convenient. I might be reading it in the bathroom. I might be reading it on the metro or in bed just as before I go to sleep. So I don't always have my notebook with me, but I do have a notebook and I make notes about what I'm reading at some point in the day. N is for neurodiversity. Have you read any books where the protagonist thinks in a different way to how we consider normal thinking is? I'm thinking about books like The Curious Instant of the Dog in the Night Time by Mark Haddon. Also about Freshwater by Akweki Amezi, a Nigerian writer. Nigeria is another N. Uh, here the protagonist was Ada and depending on how you read it, you can see it as she was possessed by spirits or she had some kind of multiple personality disorder where uh, she'd take on the persona of different characters in her life. That was a fascinating read. I gave it five stars. It was quite unlike anything I'd ever read before. Finally, N is for next. What's the next book you intend to read? For me, it's another one from NetGalley, this one, The Cry of the Innocent by Julie Bates. This is set around the time of the American Revolution in Williamsburg. It starts in 1774. Who do I tag? N is for nobody. So I'm tagging nobody. But if you want to do this tag, please feel free to do it. I'm not tagging nobody because I don't want anybody else to do this tag. I love it when you do my tags. I've also noticed in previous tags there have been lots of tags people can't answer, prompts people can't answer, like The Handmaid's Tale, if you haven't read The Handmaid's Tale or The Kite Runner, you can answer a tag about that. So in the notes below I'll add some extra or alternative prompts beginning with N, things like Noir, New Zealand, Norway, Nigeria, many other things begin with N. I'll put some alternative and additional prompts and you can chop and change the prompts as you wish if you choose to tackle this tag. Okay, if you like this video you can like and subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.